Yo, yo, people, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Sai TV. We are live. We are live. Bank holiday Monday or Easter Monday for some people who are celebrating. So big up to anyone who's who's um, enjoying Easter right now. Hope you're having a good time with your family and whatnot. You know what I'm saying to you? Still Ramadan for us. Still fasting. And uh, yeah, we're in the last 10 days, man. So it's gone quick quick you know what i'm saying so big up to everyone who's locked in and enjoying themselves if not chilled monday says walsh united big up to you my friend hope everybody's good man but yeah man Nuruddin, man what's going on man i've had a busy day today packing out you know don't you think packing out is the worst thing like you know what i mean it's stressful in it i've just gone today packing everything up and now obviously i'm leaving Obviously, I don't know if you've heard about the me and the tussle with the neighbor and that the new neighbor. You know, it's, it's a bit tense right now. You know what I mean? So, me and him, we don't see eye to eye, man. But um, yeah, man. <laughs> have you told him? Man, how was... is he, it's it, fan, yeah. isn't it? It's, fan, isn't it? it's probably he's is. A, I don't know. He's a I don't know. City man. I don't know what he is. But My guy's a listen, bit, it's... Bit of fan, mate. <laughs> yeah, man. It's crazy. It's crazy, man. But how are you, man? How's your how's your, is, uh, your day? It's a bit mild out there today. Not too bad, man. It's raining, but mild. Yeah, raining. Yeah. You can't get away from that one, but it's mild. It's mild. Yeah, yeah, to be fair, it's, it's mild. Um, listen, I wanted to, to join the same with you, man. Happy Easter to all my people worldwide, innit? Wherever you are in this yeah. world, innit? And people and those people need to behave with themselves. So you can't wish Christians, like, happy this, happy that. Listen, yes, we can. Centuries, Muslims mm -hmm. and Christians and Jewish and whatever, people have been uh, wishing each other an amazing holidays and uh, commemorating their religious, you know, you know, the religious uh, celebrations. Mm -hmm. So pipe down, people. But other than that, yeah, um, um, yeah, today's been one of those. To be fair, like, you know, I had, a, I had a, it's been a long week last week. This weekend has been long as well. Hosting an event, being in a protest yeah. against my own former organization. You know what I mean? So it's been one of those mm -hmm. things, man. Been one of those things, calling it out, calling stuff people out in a dehumanizing Palestinian. So that's been yeah. so I've been mentally and physically dra drained a little bit to be fair. So I've been doing a bit of self-care. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, but then, then you got United, United on top. <laughs> you know, you got you got you got life, you've got family, and then you got my United in the middle. My United's meant to be your escape of through through everything. You know what I mean? Back in the day with Fergie, you know what I mean? Your your day could be stressful. But you'll have Wayne Rooney and Ronaldo score a hat trick. You know what I mean? Or Wayne Rooney back to Ronaldo, back to Paul Scholes, Berbatov. You know what I mean? Your, your day would be all right. <laughs> I don't want to hit you with the nostalgia. Now you've got to deal with Rashford and Bruno and McTominay. You know what I Headless mean? Bro, like, FC. Headless yeah, bro. You got, yeah, cowards FC. You know what I mean? That's what you got to deal with now, man. You know what I'm saying to you, like, Jelly, I was watching a bit, listen, I'm not going to lie to you, I watched a bit of Premier League yesterday, you know what I mean, 07, 08 season, you know what I mean, I was watching a game, yeah, the Middlesbrough game when uh, Nani scored that unbelievable goal, you remember that one outside yeah. the box and that, you know what I'm trying to say that, to you? That, left so, foot, that was, was a left foot banger, he put it in the middle yeah. of the goal, was it, I think it was left foot, yeah, it was left one. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Keep a dive and, and, there, man. And then he tells them, listen, I need to do my backflips. Chill out for a bit. With yeah, yeah, yeah. Ferg used to tell him off, you know. Ferg used to tell him off that backflip. You know he, got injured once. he got injured once. It's not good on a hamstring. Yeah, 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 with his neck. <laughs> with his neck in it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, what a player. Like, even, you know, even a player like Nanny in this squad would get me on the edge of my seat rather than have to see players that are just so limited in what they Football do. Man. This, you, know, you know how we decrypt? And he, and, and he wasn't a, like a solid week and week out starter. No, he wasn't. He, was he a, wasn't. He would pick his games. Fergie would pick the games for him. And now we're begging for him. <laughs> we're begging for Bro. him. Him and the twins. Bro. I used to always think, you know, you know, the twins. The twins had more yeah, yeah. fight, grit, both of them, man. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I look at them yep. and I, yep. I, I see what I've got now. I look at that teams and I see what I've got now. It's like yeah. day and night. It's day and night, man. The, the different universe. Different yeah, universe. yeah, hundred percent. You know what it is, yeah. It's 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 the thing of you know what. I feel like the the the, the way they play as well. It's like that kind of like they know what they're doing, and they, and also they're technically good as well. It's technically as well. Just they they've got technical ability. You know, in that aspect. You know, what I'm trying to say people are saying breaking news. Joe Wilcox, what's the where's the, where's the news? People, I can't really see anything. It's just the yo, yo, PR Monday. 
Yeah, no, no, it could be April Fools in it. A lot of April Fools thing going on in it. It's April the first today. You know what I mean? So I don't know, mate. Sky Sports not the best source nowadays to be to be listening to that one. But um, let me just check right now. United. Make sure you don't like the video, people. Musa is on his way. He'll be here any second right now. But he says here, approach Southampton about hiring director of football Jason Wilcox. That is the latest we're hearing right now, uh, people. So to be fair, it's gonna happen anyway. We all know it's gonna happen. You know what I mean? So it's not nothing new. You know what I'm saying to you? So it's nothing new, man. So, but we got more pressing issues, but we're going to talk on Ineos. Apparently, they're not convinced. And I want to discuss as well, in terms of like favourites FC, man, and whether we really, truly want to do a build rebuild as well. Because I feel like, you know what it is with United fans, yeah? I feel like one minute, it's like things are obvious and things are glaring. But then when we win a game, everything gets brushed under the carpet. So I want to discuss that already with you, but let's talk about the Ineos situation and um, the the reports are coming out basically that they're not really happy with there is the the, the the way that we're we're playing and in particular the game against Fulham. Apparently that performance there they didn't like it and obviously we played obviously uh, Brentford uh, the other day and that wasn't great but some briefs coming out saying the performance in the two one defeat at home to Fulham five weeks ago had been dimly received by Ineos and the word was that this was the latest anemic no show against Brentford had again gone down badly in Sir Jim Ratcliffe's camp. Um, what are you making of that, Norrin, in terms of just in general, man? You know what I mean? The fact that Ineos are looking at that close. You know what? It doesn't take a, it doesn't take a genius, Norrin, to understand what's going on at my United. It doesn't, Norrin. It actually doesn't. Oh, it take a genius to understand that we got issues anyway at our football club. You know what I mean? So, yeah, man, I, I think anybody, everybody, Jim, whatever down the road, everybody knows we play bad football now. I think now... What Nuruddin, what he has done to us now, yeah, Ten Hag, is that he's he's got he's given us a bad rep. He's actually given us a bad rep, Nuruddin, you know, in terms of what we are now as a team. Everybody thinks they've got a chance against us now. Everybody. Brentford, right? I've been looking at their results and their stats and whatnot. And in that game, you know how many stats they beat us in that oh. game? It does a bot in the box, bro. Just alone that game, I read it on the on the thingy. Teams now just don't. We just become like a team where nobody fears, nobody fears us. You you could go and get a team right, and they could outplay us. They might not have the quality, but they could be like, you know what? We're having a game here today. We're having a game today. We're having it, and that is crazy, absolutely crazy, man. Yeah, um, it's really interesting because Let I'm like, your light. That? I'm like, who's that? Who's that statement for? What's that he just read out about um, the Docker or the Telegraph, the United Manchester United correspondent? Who was that for? Like, is it for me? Is it for Sati? Is it for the United fans? Who's it for? Is it for me? I just another see another piece of Ineos PR. They know which way the wind is blowing, and they want to jump on that. That's all I see it. Don't get it twisted, people. Glazers still own this football club. And Ineos just talk. It's all talk, what I see. So far, all I see is talk, 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 talk. So these statements that Saeed just read out, they're not for me. Oh. I've been calling mm. it for, for a year. I'm sorry, I have to say it. I have to say the obvious. Like Saeed said, every person, every human, their dog, their cat, their pigeon, oh. everybody could see it. Everybody could see what this Eric Ten Hag project is to me is in its last legs. And that's why mm. in United Real Therapy later on, we're going to talk about what the credentials are for mm. Manchester United's next boss. The credentials. Mm. That's what we're going to talk about. What is the credentials? Mm. What is the, what's the number one thing? What are the Principles, second thing? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Principles. yeah. We're going we're gonna to break that down. What do we want mm. as Manchester United fans? And, and, we'll, and we'll talk about that. But at the end of the day, I just... Well, I'm not surprised or shocked or dismayed because, like I said to you, I've, I've left more games early Saturday than than I've ever done uh, yeah, in my whole life. Even like, more than Moy, even more than Moyes, more than even Moyes. more than Mourinho, yeah, yeah, yeah. even more, more than, than all guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that just tells you that tells you everything. And certain people don't like it, and certain people want to tag me as Mister Negative. Mm -hmm. um, you know what? I'll give you your props, you know, Nordin. Yeah, 
And I said it on there. I think someone said it on the on the midday live today. Yeah, May United have not been playing well for a year now. It's a year. It's probably yeah. I think about maybe fourteen months. So we played our Carabao Cup right in February, late February was it? Like late yeah. February, it might have been twenty eighth of February or something like that. Yeah. So that's been now over a year. May United have not been playing well for over a year. Yeah. That's mad. And it's just got unnoticed. We had that yeah. first initial period, and then after the international after a break, you know, if I'm being honest with you, and maybe people might be saying this is disingenuous, but Rashford carried us from that January period all the way to that Carabao yeah, Cup. Yeah. So let's be honest, he went on this mad scoring run, yeah, made it look like we were playing unbelievably well, but we were winning by two ones, one nils. I don't know if people remember, but we were winning games by one goal here and there, and Rashford right. was saving us. So that was, but after that, we kind of drew games. We kind of stumbled over the line, really, to top so I, I, Everybody kept telling me, everybody kept telling me the result, results. And I kept telling them, I'm not about results. I'm not, football is not just about results. Football is about something that you can build on, an improvement, a clear strategy, a plan, a structure yeah. within the way we play. And all of it yeah. was, just, was just running on this and drilling it because he yeah. refused to change it. And I said the injuries will come because I saw Liverpool do it. I'm not some amazing person. People call me Nost Nostradam. I'm not. I What's just that word? What's that football. word? You know what? Nostradam is the guy who foresaw the future. He used to tell things about the future. Oh, okay, I'm okay, not okay, that okay, guy, okay. right? And they would, you know, Nostradamus. That's the famous Nostradamus. I'm not. I just watch enough football to know that when you go for four trophies in 14 players, you're going to burn them okay. out in the most congested season in the history of world football. Facts. Yeah. Facts. I, I, because, and it wasn't even, there was no World Cup. The season before that, Liverpool, they went, they took all finals, three cup finals, and the league to the last day, yep. to the last minute. Yeah. And what happened this season? That's why they're in the Europa League this season. Do you understand what yep. I'm saying to you? Yeah. Because I knew their body, their mental emotion, because the footballers are not machines. But not he machine refused day. to use Facts. his squad. He refused to coach yep. the, the players. Even if you don't believe these players can do your style of play, you coach them yep. to the level of enough level to get the best out of them when you need them. He didn't get them involved. He didn't do that. Instead, he relied on 14 players. And he came out and said, the manager has instant. The call to get him to sack is not coming from me, Saeed. And it's coming from Eric Ten Hag. No, no, he comes from, coming I said, from yeah, Eric I've given up, I've given up. No, no, I don't say sack him now anymore. My title, if you notice my titles now, they're not sack it anymore. Like, they just, you know what I mean? It's like, I'm, I'm, bro, everybody knows he should be sacked here. Yeah? So it's down to the club to act now. I'm, I'm tired of, you know what I mean? Crying for the sack. It's not going to happen from me. You know what I mean? And whatnot. Everybody's seen it now. I think everybody's come to a realization now that he should be sacked. It's now down to Ilios. And if they have any cojones and if there's any, any backbone to see that we are not performing well. And this manager is not coaching as well. We are the worst coach team in the league. I said it. I must have said it about after Brighton game. I think there was a, you know what? I think there was a Brighton game, you know, where, you know, when we got beat 3 1 at home, I said it on my match reaction. I said, we are the worst coach team in the league. And that was when, when I was at Ten Hag, by the way. I was at Ten Hag out, by the way, then. I just said it from an objective point of view where I was like, yo, yo, bro, what's going on here, man? Why are we not playing good football? Why can't we play good football? Why are we are so. You know, that big hole there. He's obsessed, you know. I think Ten Hag does it for a reason. But he's obsessed with winning the ball back high up the pitch, yeah? But I'm like, bro, you do realise you've got a youngster in Kobe Mino. You've got a player in Bruno Fernandes who never, ever seems to keep the wall well. And his lack of discipline always costs him. And you've got Scott McTominay, who is not any of, of the above. And he's just basically a ghost. You know what I mean? That's what it is, basically. So when in the day, right? You've got all of them situations there, but he still persists with big, big frailties in his team. And I'm like, like, why can't you see that? Why can't you see what we're seeing? But you know what's even worse, Lordin? When someone asked him, the reporter, why um, are you conceding so many shots? And basically, they tried to tell him, like, yo, you're conceding like 30 shots a game. Or I think average, we're conceding 16.9 shots a game. And the, and the reporter asked him, is this concerning? And he's talking about, well, really, they're not really good shots. They're, you know, the shots that this... Bro, do you realise there's a pattern that can emerge? The more shots you give, the more likely you're then to concede because they're getting the shots in. 
They, if the, I'm not saying, you know, from the from the edge of the box, I'd be worried. But the fact that against Brentford, they were they were good shots. Some of them hit the bar. Some of them, you know, these are not just kind of. And also, when they win the ball, it's the way they get through our team. I'm more concerned about how they get through our team rather than the the caliber of shots because the caliber of shots can be misleading. But I'm talking That's... about when we get from position A all the way until position B. How do they get there? You see what I'm saying, Jordan? So 100%. if they get there quickly, I'm more asked about that rather than the shot. You know what I mean, Jordan? Listen, the biggest thing is that um, other teams have worked out because he, he he continues with his single pivot, right? Single pivot, and he's an yeah, yeah, single old, pivot, yeah, yeah, an eighteen year old, and we are lopsided. So once we, any pass gets played through the six yeah. that are go up the pitch, then the rest of it is good night Vienna. And then you're yeah. at our defence. Saeed, there are different ways to defend. There are different ways to do it as a team. If you're going to press high, you can't have titanic level of space in between yeah. your press and your defence. You can't. Everybody either goes up. You either do a mid-block, right, where you press from the halfway line. You press, you fight for the ball, so you're still in the half. Or yeah. you go low block and play counter-attack on football. Yep. You don't do... You, you, listen, you can't do half and up. And the worst thing what you can do is tell players contradicting things. One of the biggest things what you can do to any sports, if you're a coach or a manager, you can't tell them contradicting yep. information or details. You can't. Because yep. it's what we see, what we see. So at the end of the day, I always say like, this idea that people are like coming at me, you know, because that no context thing. <laughs> They clip me in it, me yeah. saying that. That's why I'm because because I'm sorry. I saw I saw yeah yeah guy on the Bobby of Manchester United off the park and and so I did exactly the same as you. So you came out of Brighton and you were like, we're the worst coach team in the world. Yeah, right. You said that. I came out of Everton yeah. and I'm like, well, I'm getting dunked on by Sean Dice of all people. <laughs> yeah. I don't mind getting beat, but I'm getting dunked on by. I'm get, absolutely getting taken all over the park and getting bobbed. By Ghana, we let go for 17 million. He's dictating. Yep. So the point is that what we see, my, people want us to, to lie. And I also, I also I want to make a clear point as well. These are the, Because well, I see on my timeline side, it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. United win, they go, Ten Hag out as, where are you? United <laughs> lose or draw, they go, the players are shit. For one minute, but these players were giving you the moment. <laughs> Bro, you know what I mean? bro, tell like, them again. Please tell them again. I, I, it's simple. So when when Manchester United lose, right, and and United, United fans fans who are watching what they see point it out, we get accused. They go, "Well, they can't yeah. blame the manager; it's the players." But when these players score these goals to win the games, the yes. those and hack inners will go, "Well, look, silence, timelines, quiet, ten high." <laughs> But then when we lose or draw and we're getting bucked all over the pitch, it's the players. Like, oh, it's, the play it's the players. The players. That's what I'm right? saying. So, and this is where I, I don't understand. I clearly, when I think about it, I think I understand. That, listen, I am one of those people. I didn't call for Oli. Oli was sacking himself. I knew that football wasn't sustainable. Yeah. This thing with Eric Ten Hag, I wanted Eric Ten Hag. I told everybody what kind of manager to expect, yeah. what kind of coach. I said it, I put my... If, if I had a house, I would have put my house on it. Unfortunately, my guy is the biggest catfish, did whatever he did, and did that. Mm. Now, some of these players, we already know, they got no guts. The cowards. We know that. We know that. Sorry, we know mm. that. There is yep. we're soft, soft on the underbelly, bro. We are, in terms of us as a team, we, we front up. Then you've got the Glazer PR machine that Manchester United, Manchester United, this Manchester United, this Manchester United, that. And then you've got that, and then everybody hypes up. We are the great, great hype. That's what we've been in the last 11 years. So I understand people going, listen, we need to trust in one manager to get to leave him the three to three years, maybe. Just give him a three year project to go. After the three years, we'll make the judgment. But I'm sorry, within that, I need to see things that are clear. I need to see mm. things that are defined and clear, something to get behind. And on this at the moment, I see zilt. I don't see anything to get behind. And I was saying this when we were winning and people were calling me negative. And I was saying this a year ago. 
I was calling it a year ago and I was like, mm. guys, this is, is going to be very much, very, very, very much kind of a structural issue, a personnel mm. issue and a coaching yep. issue. Because this manager got whacked by Brighton, got whacked by Brentford, and then all of a sudden, boom. And then the other you know, maddest thing, when I look at this game, I watched it, I watched a lot of the highlights when, after when, you know, after the shows that we did. Yesterday, I watched bits of the game. I'm not going to lie to you. I actually think Brentford played better when they whacked, played better in this game than when they whacked us 4-0. Last season. That's what I said. Uh, that's what I said. That's what I said as well. And also, I think it was a worse game for Man United than it was against the uh, Brentford 4-0 one. But before I bring in Moose, a big up to Olu says, look at Liverpool uh, involved with good football. Trophy would come. Arsenal is also showing signs if they continue with this momentum. Uh, big up to Romanian Goodness and Southgate in. Come on. And big up Killis, man. Hope you're well, bro. He says, big up panel. I'm worried that Garnacho and Maynard or the youngsters will get injured. They play way too much and aren't rotated enough. We'll definitely talk about that one because I want to talk about players as well. Uh, but Musa, man, chat to us, man. Apparently, Ineos are not convinced. Um, what are you saying, bro, in terms of um, just in general, you know what I mean? Because obviously we didn't speak in it since the weekend, man. Listen. You know what I mean? It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's like a, almost like a, you know what I mean? Like a same old feeling, isn't it? Same old feeling, Listen, man. Listen, I'm, I'm tired of being gaslit in here by a certain type of fan base who, similar to what Nora Dean was explaining, it's like it's either, it's, like, it's either you're with the players or you're not. The next minute, it's not the manager, it's the players. They can't make their mind up. But one of the biggest... I think myths is that Manchester United cannot play, the players that we have cannot play the Man City way, cannot play the Liverpool way. I think this is one of the biggest myths that's been sold to the fan base, that we have a squad of players that cannot play how Man City play. When we saw someone like um, Louis van Gaal come in and had a similar type of squad of player, if not worse, in terms of capabilities, and had them playing a possession-based um, type of football. And on top of that, we always get the same narrative. How Scott McTominay and flipping so-and-so are going to play the Man City way? Well, then put him on the bench and put Ericsson on, who can play the Man City way. How's this player... Go on. The, 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 the mic, mic yeah? I think the mic's crackling. The mic's crackling. Maybe t try it without the mic, because I think the mic's crackling. Yeah, try it without the mic. How does it sound now? The same, yeah? One sec. Sp speak again. How does it sound now? It's still crackling I think it sounds a little better, bit. You know? A little bit crackly, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a yeah. Little yeah. Bit. Let me see. I think I'm going to have to... But we can hear you all right, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let me know, people, if yeah. it's crackling or not. Yeah, let me know if it's... Yeah, let me know, and I'll come in and come back out. So, for me, I just feel like... How do we spend, as a manager, 400 million... Yeah, and still, still be practicing. complaining. Yeah, yeah. Come in and out. Let me come out. Come in and out. Buddy. Yeah, yeah. Come in and out. Come in and out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, hundred percent, man. Just, yeah, yeah. I'm not point who's just making Saeed. I, I'll say this: I'm players, Anton Hag. I want them to go. I want the. Co I, I, I want all majority of the coaching staff to go. I just need fresh new ideas, fresh new talent, fresh everything. That's what I need. I need a rebirth. And I know that we've been on a rebuild since Fergie left. <laughs> Eleven year of yeah. rebuild. The longest rebuild in football or sport history, but I'm sorry, yeah, yeah. I need that. I need that. That the the, the injury and rehab to go. I need all the physio, all of them to go. I need new, fresh set of eyes. I eat, I I do. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's what I need. So, so it's me, ten hard, man. Not just, it's not the physio. It's ten hard. Listen, I don't just mean it's ten hard to go. It's everybody. It's the players. Yeah, everybody. Yeah. It's, 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 the, it's, it's the all the injuries. Really the, the physicality, the physicality of the injuries when you're playing that sort of football, Nuridin, it must be draining. Like, no wonder Wan Bissaka gets these injuries and you're like, where's he gone last week? You know what I mean, bro? Because they're constantly injured. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're constantly injured. Yeah, Musa, can you hear us now? Yeah, I can hear you. I took, um, I took the, um, the what? The headphones off. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's no, calm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely can hear you now. Go for it, go for it, bro. Yeah, man. Like I was saying before, man, I just can't handle when I keep on hearing um, that Man United's players can't play a certain type of football and that, you know, we've got Scott McTominay. We always, like, we've got Harry Maguire. They can't play. 
I'm saying I, I always look at our squad and I say there's an eleven there. If you, you know, go do the hours on the training field with them and want them to play a possession based um, style of football, you can do it. But when you're send, well, sending players out like Sancho, who can play that type of style? Yeah, no. when you're not we, when you're not you know starting players like do you think yeah with the disposal of players that we have that someone like Pep would play Scott McTominay in front of Ericsson? Forget about he hasn't got the legs and all of this type of stuff. Do you think a player like mm. Ericsson, with his capabilities... Remember last year, Ericsson was the player that was dropping deep in between the centre-halves, collecting the ball and playing that the young type of football that he wanted. It was Ericsson that was doing that. A season on, yes, he's had some injuries and he's had to take time to get back to that. But if you look at managers like Ange and things like that, they will rather continue with the players that can play the system that they want before bringing in players who can't, just that's going to get you moments. And this is the reason he continues to keep Bruno Fernandes on, Marcus Rashford on, Garnacho on, um, Scott McTominay on. All of these scatty players are moments players. They're going to do something in the moment, get you a goal and pull you out of trouble. But they're not going to play an attractive type of football that you want to play. You claim that you play the Ajax or... You claim that you don't have... I, can, I keep on thinking, how many managers are going to come in, get 400 million, you know, bring in about seven or eight players, and we keep on talking about the players that... The play... What are we talking about here? Because every manager brings in a set of at least six to seven players to change from what we had before. But we keep on saying the players at the club, the players that... Well, some of these players just got here. Amrabat just got here. Mason Mount just got here. There's a load of players that just got here, but we're still talking about the players at Man United. So it's either it's the whole club as a whole and there's something rotten that turns every player that walks through the door into what we're seeing today. But there's also a level of blame because we've seen someone who came into that in flipping Louis van Gaal. But this possession type of football, he was able to deliver it but we all know he didn't have the strikers to pull it in the back of the net and we weren't scoring enough goals. But in terms of playing teams off the park, playing a high line and playing a, a type of football that we could see coming, I think a lot of us looking back now in hindsight realised that that third season that we didn't give him was problematic. A lot of us looking back now and realising that we kind of pulled the trigger too early on Louis van Gaal because we, cause he had the whole you know, youth set up to what we had, you know, to the first team playing a certain type of football that we're, we're, we're not seeing today. And I'm just looking at it now and I just hear a lot of, you know, nonsense that, that... And even when you look at players at the highest level, bruv, you cannot be playing in the Premier League and not be able to keep a ball. You cannot be playing at this highest level. This is why we see... Te- this, yeah. yeah. Brentford, this is why we see teams Brentford, like... Brent- yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is why we see teams like Brentford, yeah. Wolves, Brighton... Um, not enough for name them. We see teams keeping everyone, the ball. Everyone can keep the ball at least for ten minutes. Everyone has a has a has a baseline of technical ability here yeah, where they can keep the ball for at least ten minutes. You know, I know we had more possession here. Yeah. This is what's so crazy here. Yeah. May United apparently had more possession than Brentford yeah. but I never felt like for one minute we did anything with that possession. It feels like it's either maybe side to side or it's maybe I don't know playing it across the back maybe, and that was it. But then they got the ball back and they won it, and then they pegged us, and they literally went past us, and then they attacked us. It felt like a basketball match, and that's why I'm just like, I'm confused. That just shows you, stats don't tell you everything. Stats do not tell you everything. It's not even about the when possession, though, Say si. Sometimes yeah. it's not even about the possession. It's about when we're, what's our game plan? When we have the ball, what do we do with the ball? With that possession? Like, what are we doing with that possession? There's a load of teams that don't always yeah. have the majority of the possession, but you see when they do have the ball, they have a clear directive yeah. um, game plan in terms of what they... It's like, cool, when we get the ball, this is what we're going to do. And this yeah. is how we're going to move it up the pitch and make sure that we, we get opportunities on goal. You look at our strikers, like someone keeps on telling me that Tony um, at Flipping Brentford, who just came back at January, has had more shots on target than our number nine he's been there all season 
Wow, it's mad. And he plays for Brentford. And he plays for Brentford. And he plays for Brentford. Well. And, he, and he took the first half of the season off. But why are you shocked, though? <laughs> no, nah, but it's laughable. Thomas it's Frank. a laughable start, nah, though. Thomas Frank has a distinct way of playing football. Um, yeah. well, here's where I disagree with um, Musa. Big up to you, brother. Um, mm. I'll say this. Um, Manchester United, when, Oli when this manager had put a, mm. a plan in place, which majority of the fan base were happy with, I jumped shit in January because he realised we had to be defensively sound. And he set us up in a way that we needed to have in a structure that Manchester United were not conceding many goals. Of course, City and Liverpool, apart City, Liverpool and Brentford, we were not getting slapped for lots of lots of goals. Um, this season, he's in his world, he has tried to move on and progress and be more. He came out and said Manchester United are going to be the one of the best transitional teams. Da -da -da -da. But last season, what we were watching, those players are still playing that football. <laughs> what, what, How we wanted to play last season. When I see on the pitch, the players are confused. Do I think that Manchester United players have the physicality of Liverpool? That's what I was going to ask you. That's what I was going to ask City. you. They yeah. don't. Because we've not been mm. conditioned to have those physicality, to play that mm. certain way. You don't. It's not just about, Robert, it's not just about it's keeping the ball. Man. No, no, let me finish, bro. Happy, happy, happy to disagree. It's a straight jacket podcast, bro. This degree <laughs> is where it's at. The biggest <laughs> thing is this, is that the biggest thing is this, brother. You need to have the physicality. You need to have the, the, the conditioning and even the distances. You look at it. Liverpool, Arsenal, City, whether they're defending or whether they're attacking, the distances between them, their players, and their different departments, whether it's the defence, the midfield department, or the, the forward depart, forward line, is always working in tandem. Facts. You need to have physicality to be able to do that. I I was on here. I asked Saeed. Um, I was in a couple of straight jacket podcasts that ago. go, what are we? Mm. Are, we a are we a pressing team? Because we don't press. We shadow press. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> we did it for half an hour. We saw it for half an hour, what he wants to do, but we never yeah, yeah. see it. We see it 15 minutes here, 20 minutes here, yeah. half an hour here. Yeah, Marcel, Marcel said this in 10 minutes, so we gave him 10 minutes, so 15 at best. You know what I mean? Big up to Marcel. <laughs> <laughs> Marcel's taking uh, it's crazy, you know? But go ahead. So, no, but it's true, though, it's so true. for me, the physicality is the biggest thing. I look at someone like Bernardo Silva. I'm not lying to you. There I know. is nobody in our team other than Martinez at the back who's coming back from injury, that has the level of physicality as, as in... Martinez, for me, is the ultimate physical player in our team, right? He is the he's, he's by far, he's the most physical yeah, player yeah. in our team. Bernardo Silva, who plays, he'll play on the left wing, he'll play left back sometimes, he'll play as a number six for City, he'll play far wide, he'll play behind the striker, he'll play anywhere. Because do you know why? He's got the physicality. He has that. He brushes people who are six foot four, way heavier than him, brushes them off the ball because he knows he is conditioned. And Manchester United, none of them are conditioned. That's why we just look, I swear, to, I, I mean, I, Ten Hag has turned this team into a relay team. <laughs> you know, school? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, the, yeah, you know, fourth day in school? You know, the spoon and what I know, they call the spoon and egg race? <laughs> That's yeah, what we do. The relay, though. All you see our players is just doing this. They're not getting the button. They're not getting the button. It's like relay without the button. They're just literally running around and ca getting nothing. You know what I mean? They're not carrying anything. That's the situation. Like, yeah, but you know, you know what it is? Yeah, go on, Musa, go on. When we look at our team, like, I always look at last season and I look at the season that City had and I look at um, the season Newcastle had. And Newcastle was one of their best seasons in a very long time last year. Yeah, and yeah, the yeah, things yeah. that they were being praised for. But Man United was there and thereabouts in terms of defensive unit, you know, goals yeah. conceded, and how we set up as a defensive unit to not let anyone get past us. One of the biggest issues we had last season was a serious scoring number goals. 10 and scoring yeah. goals. All Eric Ten Hag had to do to build on last season 
is to just buy, buy, go and get me two players. Go and get me a serious number 10, yeah, who can get the ball to a serious number nine and build on that. Because mm. how do we go from, you know, having a defence, and, and we always know that the, the teams with the best defence win the league. And our defence was in the top three. I think we were joint second with Newcastle behind City. Yeah. The teams with the best defence wins the league. Like, cool, score all the goals and all of that. But if you're, the defence is pivotal to, to winning the league. And everyone knew we needed like a hurricane. We didn't need a Hoyland. We needed like a hurricane, a serious number 10, when he went and got Mason Mount, to take us to that next level. And this is why I'm upset. Had I not seen this, th these same set of players compete in a season where City was breaking all records and be able to compete defensively with them, I would have been able, I'll be saying to myself, you know what, I just don't see how we do it. But all we needed to do was add goals on to what he built last season. But, but then also that he did, though. He did. He got Hoyland and he got Mason Mount. You know what I mean? I'm not this saying, what I'm saying. That's the problem. He's a 10. But but he got the wrong profiles, and that's why he I'm got the me. wrong wrong profiles, profiles. Yep. because he he yep. thought he was going to do a four uh, four three three. And what's mad? The fan base had been calling out for a four three three for I don't know how many years prior to Eric Ten Hag actually doing it. But he yeah, got the yeah. wrong profile of player, and that's the problem that we're in. You watch and Paqueta. This, you watch Paqueta. Paqueta, Paqueta a is different. Bro, Paqueta. Paqueta man. Is a baller. Yeah. Even my man at Wolves. Get me Paqueta and the bread at Wolves. The other um, eight. Is it Gomez? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Gomez, Gomez. Ja Gomez. Ja Gomez. Gomez. Get me him and Paqueta. Two midfielders like that and call it a day and just put them next to uh, our boy Mayno. Just, just yeah. put them in there and let us go and do our thing. And this is what I was talking about. And get me a serious number nine because if what we saw against City is that the best form of defence is to attack. When we threw everything on them and we threw players on, and Ahmed Diallo, when we talk about, you know, uh, Bernardo Silva, we got someone like Ahmed Diallo, low sense of gravity, went to the championship, was brushing players off in the championship. Never once was it, was it brought back to us that Ahmed Diallo last season was getting buoyed off and manhandled and he wasn't physical enough for the championship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As physical as we know the championship is, we saw him at Liverpool tracking back, defending, making tackles. You know, for me, we have players. Does our, does our manager make the most out of him? No. Does he play with the type of players that can make the similar impact that we see other teams? No. Is Ahmed Diallo, uh, Bernardo Silva? No. But can he have a similar impact at Man United? Can he do something like, can he, mm. you know, play that type of ball that we want? Yeah, he can. I'm looking at players like Ahmed Diallo, Jaden Sancho, um, Ericsson, Casemiro, um, Main, Kobe Main. I'm thinking, where, where do you have space for someone like Bruno Fernandes in there? Sit him on the bench. But he and as much have, as... This is the issue we have. This is why I said, yeah, this is why I said, yeah. you have to sell Bruno Fernandes. You know what I mean? And, and have Rashford, to sell him. Because and we Rashford. have to cater towards their needs. You know what I mean? So now, like I said to you, You've got a midfielder who, like I said, for me, technically, I just don't see it in him. He can't keep the ball. Yeah, he may spam crosses in a, in the final 30, maybe good. But I've always said it. You've got to get this guy out of the team. For you to build a strong team, build it A, physically and technically, Bruno Fernandes cannot be part of it. But that's a problem, though. We're stuck with it. He's a captain. Man United's got him. The Most of the fan base like him. And this, you can't add elements to it. You can't add a Jade, you know. You can't add a technical ball around him. You can't. Yeah, in Portugal, but Portugal's different. People keep putting club football to, you know, well, international football. football. It's not the same football. So when you say, but he plays with Bernardo, he plays with these players, bro, they sit off you. It's low block. It's whatever. This, when it's 100 miles an hour and it's physical and it's intense and you tell him to do a thousand things at once and he can't do it. Come on, man. Yeah, exactly. This is anti-football. I'm sick and tired of it. I'm big up to Ricky. He exposed him today on Twitter. You know what I mean? And said what he had to say. And then people saying, oh, but it's not him. It's Ten Hag. But one minute, you, again, like I said, what Nuridin said, you want to praise Bruno Fernandes one minute. But then now, when it's down to the system, but now it's down to the system. So what is it then, people? What is it then? Is it, is it the system or is it Ten Hag? This is what I don't understand. I want to know, people, is it the players or is it the system? 
Which one is it? And if it's the players, are you ready for a rebuild? Are you ready to take out players? Are you not? Who fits the system? Who doesn't? Because I don't know. One minute is they like it, one minute they don't like it. We're so we're so fickle as a fan base. It really, really annoys me because against Liverpool, it was the best thing to slice bread, and that that player is good, and that player deserves to be playing. And now everyone must go, and the players can't fit the system. I had people messaging me saying, "Why are you going at t- Why are you going at Ten Hag?" I said, "Yeah, because he's picking the team. No, it's the players." I said, "Hold on a minute. Who's telling McTominay to start?" Yeah. Do you want McTominay to start? No. Okay, then. It's Ten Hag for starting him then. Oh, but yeah, you know what? You're right, you know. So then what are you talking about then, innit? So I just don't I just don't get the fan base logic when they when they look and they comprehend what I'm seeing. It's Ten Hag majority, but it's also these players are not good enough. At least say that. But it's no, it's all down to the players. They're not no, good enough. Listen. I just don't but get this it. Is it. But this no, is no, it. listen. We have, we have got certain players that can be coached in a certain way to be physical. But then Hag didn't yeah, do no. it. Instead, he went yeah. for the four trophies. When you go for four trophies and you don't do the coaching, you don't do the developing, it's always going to catch up with you. So, hey, listen, you start walking into exams. Imagine you're a doctor, you got your final exams. You've not done any revision. You've not done anything. You walk in there, you're going to get found out. You ain't going to go pass. That's how it is. That is what it is. Eric Ten Hag is solely to blame for this. Now, do I believe that? That Manchester United is a difficult job because of all the shenanigans that comes around because we've got the biggest PR. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know this. You know this when you take that job. Nobody put a gun to his head and said, take the job. We were all behind it last season in terms of the disciplinarian. That the fact that he didn't have any favourites. The fact that, yeah, we're like fresh. Like, you know what I mean? This is fresh. Yes, this is what we wanted. But at the end of the day, the football, if you're not doing the coaching, and do I blame him? He's only got four coaches that he bought with him. That was the that was a worry from Dave Dossard, and I told you that as well at the time. Four coaches, and we've all got all his coaches, and some of Jose Mourinho's coaches. Nah, mate. Mm. Nah. At the end of the day, it's simple. Eric Ten Hag has said, when we look at his team, we look like we are the worst team, like he said, coaching out of the Premier League. We're the yeah. worst team in terms of the way we play as a team. Right. We, we, we're confused. And when I look at the players, it gives me this exactly the same vibe mm. that I saw on the Oli, the last two months of Oli's tenure, where Oli said, we're going to yeah. play from four. Oli was like, yeah, we're going to press. And the players were like, uh, and Oli came out in, in that overlap thing saying, yeah, you had to be. I couldn't play that uh, counter-attacking yeah. football anymore. It had to develop. You had to move on because that is what the plan is. That is the next part of forward. But, but yep. Ten Hag didn't understand that he needed to do that in the first six months. Do you think United fans would be moaning if we were out of the Europa League and we went out of the League Cup? I mean, and we were out of the FA Cup, but we were just, but at the end, we were seeing it. To me, it's what you want. I've had arguments and, and screaming matches with Saeed on here. You want results or do you want good football? For me, I don't mind getting beat. I do not mind Manchester United getting slapped around, but if I see good football, if I see the other keeper making saves, if we're hitting the woodwork, if we're creating chances, I don't mind that. We're going to get stopped anyway. And now we're getting slapped, we're getting outplayed, and with 11 defeats. And trust me, 13th and what, what, 12 and 13th and 14th are coming. They're coming in the next nine games. They're coming. He's going to break the record. They're coming. So, yeah, yeah. I might as well get beat trying to play good football. I might as well. So, you ain't going to see good football with this manager. You know what I mean? <laughs> you ain't going to see it. Big up HKM Music. Eric Ten Hag out. Get this clown out of my club. Nah, but you know what's Saeed mad, yeah? I disagree. Saeed is where I disagree. HKM Music, I love you, brother. But Eric Ten Hag alone, ain't, getting him out ain't going to fix this. It's a Just, big fix. I'm telling you now. This is where it's we a big fix. To, Listen, that's where I depart with a lot of the people who want to hang out. I do not believe him by himself just getting oh, we're him not out. Saying that. We're not saying that. We're not saying that. Solve this. It's not you know what solve. kills me, though? Players need to go. Players who've been here and overstay yes. their welcome need to go. The, all the coaches that have been there with previous managers need to go. The medical department that botched up the Martinez, poxed up Pogba, poxed up Martinez, poxed up Malassia, all of them need to go. Guilty as charged. Guilty on Pogba. Guilty on Malassia. Guilty on Alessandro Martinez. 
They need to be sacked. People are comfortable at this football club. They need to all go. Some of you give all the credit and think that Ineos are going to come with their magic one and going to change this. They're not going to change this overnight, but do it now. I'll take the pain right. now for the... For, you know what? I'll take the pain now in the short in the short term for the long-term gain. All those people need to head out. Yeah. In order it's difficult no, to clear out to all be. the players. No, I'm sorry. If you said to me, big up to big up to you, right, brother? Yeah, Olu, if Olu. You said to me, Olu. If you, listen, if, if you said to me, bro, that Man United do not sign any players, but we spend the whole transfer and the money paying players out, I'm like, yeah, do it. Yeah, Fucking yeah. do it. Do it. Yeah. Because I'm sick of seeing the same shit every week. Do it. Mm. If it's been 150 back in this summer transfer, clearing out the dead wood, do it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take that. I'll take that. And that's what is, uh, you know why I take that? Because I don't believe this um, this story and this narrative that if Pep Guardiola was our manager, we couldn't play a different type of football with the players that we had. I don't believe it. I don't believe Whoa. this narrative that if we had a different type of manager, we. this is why I, I agree with Noah. I would clear out everybody who cannot play that football. And I'll stay with a squad of 15 players who I know yeah. can do it. I know it. I'll clear them yeah. all out and I'll fight it out. And then, you know what I'll do? I'll just bring players in from the youth set up to join in when we need them. And then I'll fight it out with my 15, 16 player squad. And I'll just crack on with players who can't play it. Because I can pick an 11 who's already played it when they were somewhere else. They've already done it. They've walked into United and they just don't know what's going on. They've already been at academies like Atalanta, you know, like Dortmund, like this, like that. That they've played it. Musa, but listen, let me ask you a question, yeah. Would you take Endo in your team? If I said to every United fan, right, yeah, we'll take Endo, you know what I mean? At the start, everyone would be laughing, yeah. Of a course. majority, you know what I mean, because he came in, Stuttgart, nobody knew of him. But now, yeah, look at look how important he's been into Liverpool now, yeah. I, but I, I, United fans, so but now not... United fans will take goals instead of actually a, a guy who can play football. This is what yeah. I want people to understand, yeah. Goals don't equate to being a good footballer. I'm sorry. Goals do not equate to being a good footballer. So for me, yeah. if that McTominay goals dried out, yeah, and he was the player he was, I generally, he'd be a League One player. But because he gets yeah. the goals, it somehow gives him this superior status and this idea that he needs to be starting games and he's a saviour. This is the problem. And the same thing was happening to Bruno Fernandes, let's be honest. It's a British if media, though. goals at the start, yeah, of his career and whatnot and actually was not that sort of player, I generally think he would not have been eulogised to this level. But because he has done, yeah, and he's got the goals, yeah, and, 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 and he's based it on that, yeah, and obviously he got the penalties at the start, yeah, a lot of people have based their opinion on that. He's clutch, he's this, he's that. But as a footballer, a lot of these guys, you, when you judge them as a footballer, most of these guys could be sold. Rashford, Bruno, McTominay, all these guys that you're talking about now, they could be sold just based on being a footballer. But what happens is you get the goals coming, right? And everything's forgotten about. It's all wrong. The problem with Bruno is, though, Saeed, problem is with Bruno, Saeed, is that Bruno's at a club where he, he's, there's no one around him to push him to the, other, to the next level. He's not at a club like City or Liverpool where if he's not performing, he's going to be on the bench watching other players in his position yeah. performing. Having to adapt his game to be able to get minutes on the pitch. Having to realise, if I keep on trying to play this ball, I'm not playing on this team. Pep will make it clear. There are things that you can do. And this is why Pep's known for coaching the talent out of players. This is what they say. He coaches it out of them and, and then they, they, they lose their individual flair that they have as, as players. But if you keep on trying those funny balls and they're not... Look at what he's done to uh, my man when he took him off and he brought on... Is it Coverich or something? Um, when he bought, when yeah, he took off the brain, he took yeah, off the yeah. brainer. He said, "Yeah, yeah, I needed someone who can keep the ball better." That was his. That was his reason for taking off Kevin De Bruyne because it was that Bruno yeah. factor. But he's in a team where he can do what Bruno does, but he also has players around him. But he he also does it where it's more effective. I think the problem with Bruno is that he needs to learn. He's not in a Man City team, and he's not in a Liverpool team. And he has to understand the players around him. I think he should be more clever. And I think that's when his IQ is questioned. He keeps on trying 
the same thing. Time. Remember when he had players around him who could deliver, whether it was Paul Pogba or when he had, you know, when it, when Martial was on on the on the end of his funny balls, it made him actually look better than where he, he was today. And I think that happens to Kevin De Bruyne. You bring Kevin De Bruyne into this Man United team and he's pulling off these balls and no one's getting to the end of them. People are going to say, how many times is this kid going to pass the ball and try these funny balls that are not getting anywhere? And I think that's one of the biggest problems that Bruno has is that he should have a better football IQ and say to himself, let me develop my game differently for where I am. But he keeps on trying the same thing and it's keeping him and it's leading us down the same alley. I was going to read, yeah. I was going to read something, yeah. Oh, yeah. Big up to HK and Musa. I was actually going to pull it up right now. Did you talk about what I said earlier about the players having to play others because of contractual agreements and not on training and performance? So Sancho training up to standards is BS. Yeah, let me bring you this um, screenshot um, of the quote Ten Hag made. I don't know when it was, you know, to be honest with you. But I think it was talking about Donny van der Beek, basically. And then he said, basically here, then he struggled for a long time when recovering from that injury. So I think it's probably the main reason for why he hasn't been playing. Then we decided alone in the summer and nothing came. Then his opportunities were few because so also we made appointments and agreements with players and there was conflict in those positions. The competition was high. So let's be honest, man. What from? I, I don't know when he made this comment here, but what all I can say here from that year, it, it just shows you. I covered it on United. Sorry? Therapy. Yeah, yeah, you know what? United. I think we did, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, I think we did, you know, as well. But also... It comes to a situation now where there's favourites. And I've been saying it for a while now. There's been favourites, yeah? And certain players are just in the team no matter what. So you've got Rashford, Bruno. They're always going to be in the team regardless, isn't it? You know what I'm saying to you? So that idea that he, where we say there's been also appointments and agreements with players and there was conflicts in these positions, bro. What about players just being good enough, you know what I mean, in those positions? What about we don't even, we, we, we actually say, you know what, players are played on merit. You know, so when players have good performances, right, we actually talk about them having good performance and they actually play. But no, we go about situation differently and we go about favourites FC. And this is a situation now, you know, we have the favourites FC now. And uh, these and lot and are playing is, because of that. This is my point. And this is my point. And there's many other quotes that Eric Ten Hag has talked about. Seniority. He's like hierarchy. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. When, especially when it came to like Ahmad, I'm sure it, there was a quote where he said something about Ahmad. Well, there are senior mm. players, you know, ahead of him. And you're like, listen. But, and then he admitted that he's been balling out in training. He admitted yeah. that in a press conference, <laughs> that he's been balling out <laughs> in, in training. But yeah, he did say that. He said that he's, yeah, he said that his level of training didn't get him the the, the, the minutes he deserved. Yeah, what, I mean. what are you doing then? Bro, what's this training BS? What are we doing training anyway, man? <laughs> this guy talks so much BS, man. That's why I don't believe the Sancho situation, <laughs> man. People can say to me, oh, but Sancho not been trained. I said, bro, ski, it's not about training. It's about favourites. The manager has favourites, so he's going to pick them favourites. Whether you like it or not, this is what happens. Club politics gets involved, man. You know what I'm saying to you? So, end of the day, yeah, I, and that's what I believe. And that's why I never, ever got caught in the idea of training. Bro, who's training well? He even said so. Well? Does, but you know what? But he said in training, he said he doesn't do the, the rhythms and stuff like that in training. He doesn't. He said he believes it to be in the game. He does it in game. That's why he wants to have these players playing in the game. And I'm like, well, how are you going to get the rest of them involved in if you're not coaching them to play in the way you uh, want them to be on the Saturday or the Tuesday or the Wednesday? How come you're not doing that? He, that's what I'm saying. Though. This idea that Eric Ten Hag, none of the Eric Ten Hag be out people. I've done it. Eric Ten Hag is Eric Ten Hag out and he's simple and clear. With his messaging, yeah. with the way the club, the, the, the football is, is uh, the football we're watching is, the structure of it, the way the team is set up, his in-game management, yeah. all of it. The call, sometimes people say, there's a famous that the call is coming from inside the house. It's uh, not your neighbour down the road. It's not your ops. It's coming from inside yeah. the house. You know the what? The call you know what is coming from inside the house. And I always said, the Eric Ten Hag is that he refused to believe in his fundamentals. He believes he got away. He went away from that, and yeah, now yeah. he can see he abandoned his principles. We are, yeah. and now I don't know what he's doing. He's so confused. The guy looks yeah. ill. Honestly, somebody <laughs> said there was a photo going around yet. Yeah, what Manchester United do? Yeah, I see that. I see that. He looks ill, man. He looks ill. It's yeah. the truth, man. The club is a, the club is run and owned by vampires. They suck the blood out of you. 
But the fact that yeah. United fans think this is going to change when you get rid of him, he's not the Maybe guy to give another, Listen, listen, <laughs> he's not the guy to give the three year to. Someone like this, Zerbi, will be the guy to give three year to because you know why, Said? He's the drill sergeant. You know, if Bruno is giving the ball away, if Rashford is not doing what he's telling him to do, if McTominay is not going to get off the football pitch. And he, yep. you know what? And the thing about him is that even when Brighton didn't have any injuries last season, he was rotating. Rotating, keep the keep it fresh. Rotate because yeah. systems king, not individuals. Mm -hmm. Systems king, not individuals. Yep. Let me just get get these super chats here. Big up to HK and said Eric Ten Hag let him take Rashford and Bruno Bartomeu, uh, Lindelof, Maguire. Those five are we're so bad. Add Luke Shaw as well into that as well. Lincoln Lawyer says too many fancy as in binary terms. Player reset is needed, but the manager is hired on a nine million year to make it work and produce, especially when he spent four hundred million. But you know what it is though. Like even the Amrabats of this world and these guys here, yeah, people, people, people have written them off here yeah, too soon because we haven't seen the best of them. And that comes down to the manager. Had a manager been there, like to get to improve these players, a lot of people would have different minds of it. And whether you think Amrabat's good or not, I'm not saying I'm trying to bring back Amrabat to everyone. All I'm saying is that we've written off so many players because this manager has not got the best out of them. And then the ones that we know that are rubbish, we keep giving time and time and time again new chances to evolve. And that's the problem. You were never going to get anywhere. You know, look at the, the Anthony thing. Yeah. The reason why I think it's so sad. Yeah. Is that, yeah, he's been not a great player for my United. Yeah. But look at the manager who brought him in. He was meant to be the guy that gets the best out of him. And he hasn't done it. You know, now he's put him on the bench. You look at the Mount situation. Will he get, will he get a start against, um, against Chelsea? Probably not. You know, all of these guys that are coming in now, are they going to get their game time? Look at Ericsson now. Ericsson one year, bye-bye. You know? But in other leagues or other the players, they, you know, they, they'd have a solution for them. They'd have a way of playing and how to implement Ericsson in the team. Again, you don't do that. So there's so many things wrong with this manager. And it's just, it's just, it's just awful, man. It's just awful. You know what I mean? And now we've got a massive week. You've got Chelsea and then you've got Liverpool Pro. You lose them two games. Hi. <laughs> I would sack him on the spot, personally, for me, but <laughs> he won't in it because he's got the FA Cup the week after. So, even if you lose those games, there's no point sacking him because I don't, I'm not asked to see McLaren and these you guys. Wanted to suffer, that's why. You want to suffer, that's why. No, but I you know what is more a Listen, I want his reputation ruined because he lied to me. He lied to me. That's what he's done, man. He lied to me. The brother lied to me. Do you know he what? I'm upset, though. To the whole fan base. Go ahead, Musa. Yeah. Yeah. What I'm upset is that cool. Don't sack him. But how the heck is 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 Jurgen Klopp able to make an announcement that he's leaving? How is flipping Tuchel at Bayern Munich able to make an announcement that he's leaving? We need an announcement that this guy's leaving. Stay to the end of the season. But I need an announcement. I need it clear no, no, that we're moving. Musa, because Musa, and from our previous experience, as soon as they do that with interims, United players down to. And and we don't I, need I an interim. We don't need an interim. We just need him to say to us, you know, he's come to an agreement. At, at the end of the season, he'll be leaving. He's going to let the new ownership go into the different direction that they want. And they're going to give it all until the end of the season because we can't get any worse. We're we, 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 we can't do that, apparently. Somebody told me before, uh, well, another long time ago, he said because we're a publicly listed company and that okay. could affect shares. Okay. Yeah, because that's what's upsetting me now, just not knowing that he's, you know, that they're not behind him and 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 that they're off. Because that's what we all need. All those other clubs, all those other clubs are not publicly listed football clubs. They're not. Look at that. Clubs. See, that's the they're issue again. Owned. And that's the issue again. We need to, and that's what we need to do with Man United. And by the way, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I don't feel comfortable. I want him gone because the football is is crap. But to blame everything on him, I don't agree with that. But what I blame you know, him on is that when he came in. It, it, there was two roads, side. There was two clear roads, two clear yeah, yeah. roads for him. Yeah, two directions. Yeah, Eric yeah, and I yeah. got the job, got the warning from Van Gaal. Remember, he told us in the first press conference. Yeah, he met with Van Gaal, but he decided in his own way. Yeah, two yeah. pathways. One pathway was to stick with the old way and go for results and go for trophies and all of that business. The other way was to fundamentally change and lay down his blueprint. And once you yep. stray away from your blueprint, Saeed, it's almost kind of like try to swim between uh, France and Britain without proper backup. 
You know what I mean? <laughs> Without the proper training, you're always going to be drowning. Yeah. That's how you're going to yeah. be. He chose yeah, that. Yeah. So now, to me, I don't think Eric Ten Hag is a bad coach or he's a horrible... I don't know him personally. Like I said, I, caught, I saw him a couple of no, times. No, I don't think he is. You know what no, I mean? No, exactly. It, and you know what me, Sai? You know, no kids, no no partners. You know what I mean? I, I forgot to tell something to you. I'll tell it to you. But no, I don't get the, the family involved here. I caught him a couple of times. I wanted to say to him, you might be able to do what you did getting beat and all that, seven or whatever, yes. at Area Divisa, but not Manchester United, man, not against Liverpool. Yeah. Not the, I was going to, two games, I was going to educate him on the culture, Manchester culture, that we, this is unacceptable. You don't do that. But both times, he was, he was misses. You know what I mean? So, I couldn't find that time. Yeah. But, for what he's done to me, I need him damaged to the end of the season. I need him, I'm sorry, I need his reputation to be ruined. I want him for three years or two years to rebuild his reputation again at more stable football clubs. Listen, but he knew what job he was taking on. Calling. Manchester United is on a state on a not stable job. He knew what he was coming to. His eyes were wide open, people. He's my not Munich the already friend. Buy him Munich, man. You can go somewhere else like that, man. Yeah, good luck you know what I'm saying to you. But listen, before we wrap up, um, do you think we'll win it on Thursday, Nordin, Chelsea? Um, uh, they on the, well, it depends what tactic he's going to pull out. Is he going to pull out? Uh, We're away, guys. You know, do... Is he going to pull out counter attack? Defensive wise, they can see goals as much as we do. Um, so the the, the power at the back, but they've got good attack, and they're gonna they, they they miss chances, but they'll open us up. They will open us up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On their day, maybe on their day, Musa. What do you reckon? No, not we're good. away. We're away. Um, Chelsea are not dead. Um, that Cole Palmer guy is on job. Um, yeah, and they're they're at home. They're at home, and they need a win against you know a so-called big club in their in front of their home um, fans just to kind of forgive them for the kind of up and down season that they've had. They'll turn up for us at home. And they'll get the win. I just don't see how we beat Chelsea. And let, obviously, we're going to become the counter attack team that's away from home, just you know, keeping it tight and trying to break and and and, and steal some points away from them. We can't even but, keep it tight, Musa. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's peak. It's peak. And the, the thing pressure. about it is that they've got a bench setting, so they can change it. They've got a bench. I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. This is what I'm saying. They're not crap at all. Like I rate, I rate what they've got over there, and I just feel like um. Yeah, they'll beat us. I just don't see us winning our next two games, if I'm honest with you. We're just we're on this because we didn't see ourselves beating Liverpool last time. So we're on this wishful thinking again. And a club at this level should not be on this wishful thinking because there's nothing that we've seen that tells us we should be winning these games. We're yeah. just thinking and wishfully thinking, oh, yeah, we can. we're asking players to do things in these games that they haven't done all season. Yeah. Facts. Yeah, it's a loss. It's a loss. Listen, we'll find out, man. We'll find out, man. Yo, you know Musa, what I mean? are you but available? People, I'm available. I'm ready, man. Musa, jump yeah, on, man. man. Please send him the link, man. Jump on. Yeah, send yeah, him the link. It's on the private, it's on the private chat, Musa. It's on the private chat. Check the private cool. chat, man. I'll send you the link anyway. People, cool, head cool. over to United Real Therapy now. We'll take you over there. People, make sure you like the video. There's on 400 and 42 likes. Please get us over to 500 likes. The minimum, we've got a thousand people here. Minimum 500 likes, people. So please, uh, you know what? I'm do, gonna do, do come, that. I'm gonna come in the comments. So, those who are Eric Ten Hag in who still believe in the manager, please give me three reasons why. Like, I don't believe yeah. just getting rid of him is gonna fix it. I believe the players, the coaches, like the medical, all of them have to go. All of them have to go. Yeah, I'm a believer there in that. Go. I don't believe one person can come in and fix it all. I don't believe that. So Big up, big up, man. Big up, man. Cultural shift. All right, big up, man. Alex Candia, man. Big up, man. Big up, team, man. Ugandan, brother, Listen, people, like the video, man. Like the video, people. On your way out, like the video, man. Big up. We're out. Peace.